Hello, Coffee Patty here. And as you can see, I've been having lots of fun making baskets and bowls. This first video, if you've never made a rope basket, do look at this video first. It shows you lots of tips and tricks and the basics on how to get set up and how to finish your basket with handles or a loop. Then, I showed you how to make a basket with absolutely no raw edges. So that's a fun basket as well, a little bit more labor intensive than these ones, but beautiful. And then I had some people say, well, how do you make a square basket? So this is what I've come up with. And I will show you how I make the little handles and how to start it, how to get it finished. And this one is an actual raw edged basket. So you will get that more rougher sort of look than you do get from a finished basket like this. But that's just the look for this one. Some people like that look. So if you like that look, you want the raw edge basket, and you want to make a square, then keep watching. And the supplies I'll be using for this basket. I'm using the cotton sash cord, which is a clothesline cord. It's from Ace. I bought this one from a local hardware store, but I will also leave some links in the description box below if you need to find some clothesline cord. This one is a synthetic cord. It's fine. It's just little tiny fibers inside. You can sew through that. And this particular one is one quarter inch times 100 feet or 0.6 centimeters. And you're also going to need a cutting board. I used an Omni Grid ruler, my rotary cutter to cut my fabric, lots of thread in the color of your material, lots of bobbins pre wound because you'll use a lot of thread to do the zigzag, a pair of scissors or clipping scissors for clipping your threads. And this is just a crochet hook that I sometimes use when the clothesline is wrapped back and forth that sometimes is handy to have something to keep it pushed together while you're sewing. And I do find that finding the right fabric will make all the difference for your beautiful baskets and how it looks. This one has got the shades going from a light purple to a dark purple. I've got some white. This will make a variegated kind of look on these strips here. And again, I've got some darker or some lighter purple up here. So I like to just fold my fabric in half. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut my three quarter inch strips using my Omni Grid ruler and measuring up my three quarters onto my cutting board and using my rotary cutter. And then once I've cut this three quarter, then I know I can move up to my half inch mark and then cut again. I will get another three quarter inch strip and so forth and carry on until you've got all your three quarter inch strips cut. And again, this will be a raw edge basket because I will not be folding over any of my edges. We will be using it just like that. If you have bought your clothesline cord like this and a hank like this, it's much easier to take it and just roll it up in a ball because this does tend to tangle and it's not fun to sit there and try to untangle a knot in the middle of your project. And this will just sit in one of your baskets and you can just pull out the amount that you need and it's really nice and handy that way. And I did forget to mention one other handy little item that I use, which I did find at the dollar store, are these clips. And they've got a really nice wide opening so it will fit perfectly over a nice quarter inch or even the smaller cords. And I use this for when I'm winding my fabric around my cord and then when I've stopped, 
I will use this to adhere the material onto the cord. To get your wrap started, I'm going to be placing my first strip of fabric over my cord and I'm going to leave it so it's only about halfway up the material, like so. So let's just wrap around that first part as tight as you can and go around a couple times. Once you've got it nice and secure on the top, we're just going to wind it down. Like so. Once you've gotten down about two or three inches, I'm going to secure it. And then what I like to do is I'm going to come up in here and I'm going to sew a straight stitch along here just to secure this first part. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it this way because it's always easier to sew into something solid than it is to start here and get the feet to grab it. So I'm gonna come back this way and I'm gonna lift my pressure foot up to sneak that underneath. And I'm going to make sure my sewing machine is just on a straight stitch, not the zigzag. Put my pressure foot down. And I'm going to use a fairly long stitch. So we'll just start sewing and we'll do a little bit of a back stitch just to hold that in there. And I'm just going to sew along right through the middle here and right to the end of the fabric. And back stitch. And you're going to find that just doing that one extra step is really going to help a lot. So just clip your threads. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my needle in the end of my material here and put down the pressure foot. I now have something to hold on to my cord while I wrap the rest of this material. So in the beginning, because we're going to be forming this in loops going back and forth, I'm not going to pull down a lot because I find that when you twist the cords back and forth, it tends to open up. So for the first part, we're going to do a fairly tight wrap just for the first section. So I'm going to continue to wrap until this whole piece of fabric is used up. I've come to the end of my one piece of fabric. So I'm just going to use my handy dandy little clip here. I'm going to reverse this needle so you're not actually sewing. You don't want to be sewing that part. And I'm just going to move it up again. And this is just giving me something to hold on to. All right, so I've now got my next piece of fabric. Remove my clip. I'm going to continue this wrap so it's wrapped all the way around nice and tight. I'm coming in with my next one. I'm just going to follow exactly where I was on that last one. I'm going to fold that little end in, make a nice tight fold, nice tight wrap, and then start bringing it around. I'm going to wrap that one extra time just to make sure that's nice and secure. Once it's secure, you can then start bringing it down. And I've just finished wrapping my second piece of fabric and I'll just secure that with another clip. We'll reverse our needle so it's not sewing. So I have about 28 inches of my cording wrap with fabric, which is about 71 um, centimeters. 
Now I've tried doing this a few different ways and one is to zigzag while you're on the machine and you'd be like curling back and forth to make the first part of your base to make your square. Now I found that if I didn't get these right on and it's hard to do it on the sewing machine, if this is longer than this one, you're going to get a really distorted square. So what I decided to do is grab my Omni grid ruler and then I've got a base that I can measure and keep in my two inch measure. So every time I bend this up, I want to make sure I'm not going past my two inches or not going below. So once I get one wrap, I'm going to come in with some pins, some sewing pins. I'm just going to adhere that and keep that in place. And then I can do my next wrap. Get my, now be careful not to poke yourself. But at least this way I'm finding I can really monitor if I've got my wraps exactly where I want them. So I'm just going to wrap that one more time. And I'm going to attach it with my pins to hold it in place. Okay, so what we've got now is I've got two inches this way and I've got two inches this way. So if you've got the same measurement here and here, chances are we will get maybe a square. So once you've got that wrapped, let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to start holding this together. Now that we've got that held together in the middle, I'm going to take my right side pins out because I don't want to sew through them. And we'll go over to the right side and we're going to really squish these ones in as well. Again, starting on the last row, bring down our presser foot and really squish those in. And I'm going to come over to the right side, take my pins out, and do the same thing. So just doing that first little step, it just really helps to hold it in place while we now go back and we do our zigzag and we start our bowl. I have a jeans needle in here. If you want, you can probably get by with a regular needle, but just if you want something stronger, a jeans or a leather needle. And on my machine, I'm going for my zigzag as wide as I can go. So on my machine, it's a six. And for my length, I use a four. I don't like to use a really long length because I find that it just goes way too far down and it's too hard to control. So we're going to start our zigzagging on this side. My end is coming off the left side for now and my needle's on the left right now so I will 
start on the left. And we're always wanting to keep the center of our pressure foot in the center of our two cords. So this is where you might want to get a tool. Whether you have a stiletto in the States, I can't find stilettos here, but that's fine. Or whatever you can have just to give it a little push in to help it, to keep it nice and straight together. So let's just get it started. And I'm gonna push in with my crochet hook Make sure that's really nice and tight together. And when I get to the end here, I'm going to want to make sure that I end on the left side because now I'm going to be turning this. And now we're going to come down and sew these two together. And I'm just going to clip my ends here so I don't get in the way here. All right. So again, now we're pressing these two together. And we're zigzagging together again. Again, I'm going to hold my fingers this time, or you can use a tool. And I'm just going to press it together. Now I want to end on my right side because we're going to turn it and now we're going to be sewing these two together and end on the left and turn And now we've got a nice, solid, firm base to start our square basket. Now we want to keep our cord on the right side and our basket forming on the left. So let's go back in, continue with our zigzag. One more, there we go. Just so it's a little bit further out because we want to keep the middle of our pressure foot in the middle of our two places we're going to sew. Again, lift it up a little bit and then we're going to press it in. Coming around. Now don't worry if we didn't quite catch in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just make my first round all the way around. I'm going to come back in and then come in there again. So right now we're just forming our nice square shape. And you notice I'm sewing past and just into this to form our corner. Okay, I'm going to stop here because I want to come back in and I want to reinforce this part here that I didn't quite get sewn in. And this might happen to you as well. That's okay. So we're going to just make sure that this is sewed together. Ok, 
I'm going to take this out because we had to come back and reinforce my one area there. And if you have to do the same, that is just fine. These are a little bit trickier than sewing all the way in a circle. I'm just going to put my needle down because now it's time to wrap with more fabric. So every time you come up to a corner, we're going to go a little bit past to make our bend. And then you can make your corner. And you can come back and push in and we're ready for our next edge. Now I'm going to just stop here, I'll back stitch, and I'm going to take it off because I want to trim up all my little ravels and ends because it's harder to do that when you've got your sides on it. So I'll just take this off. And the other thing too is because when you're making a square basket, it's pretty almost impossible not to get gaps here because you've got to form your square. If you were to round this, you're just going to start making a circle. So I'm going to go back in, I'm going to zigzag in between all these areas just to secure these again. And I'm going to come in with my scissors and just take off any little stray bits of thread from the raw edges and clean it up now because it's easier to do it now than later. It's the size I want is approximately eight by eight or that would be approximately 20 centimeters. And now I'm going to start making my sides. I want a fairly straight side, so I'm gonna lift all the way up here and that will form my sides. So away we go and around we go. And I'll just stop and wind some more fabric around and I will continue to hold up and form my sides. I thought I'd just show you how I actually do my wrapping. I actually stand up. I've just got it wrapped around the top of my sewing machine here. And with both the cord and the fabric going straight down, it's much easier to just keep turning it around. And you're not kind of doing this big flip over and it's not getting caught up on anything. So if you want to wrap like this, it will go a lot faster for you. And I'm continuing to go around and as you see, my basket is right up and over the sewing machine so I can get a nice flat side and continue to go around. So I've decided to stop there and I've actually got about uh, three and a quarter inches or eight centimeters in height. And what I like to do is I pre-wrap about two meters or two yards of my cording. And then what I'm going to do is take this to the sewing machine 
and I'm going to just zigzag along this whole rope just to secure my last row. I'm going to change the width of my zigzag to be a little bit narrower, so I'm going to bring it down to four, and I'll leave my length at four as well. So I'll just come back in and finish up where I was here on my basket. There's many ways to finish off your baskets. Here's one way that I've just brought it back in and then sewed it together. You would just be cutting off part of that and then tucking it under. And this one is when I made handles and you stop sewing and then just keep going around a few times so you've got a handle. If you want more detail on how to do these two handles, then please watch my first video on how to make rope bowls. On my second video on rope bowls, I chose to finish off this way. So this way I've just looped it around and then sewed it to the basket. That's another way to finish off. On this basket, I've actually looped it around and done the same on the other side. So when I'm sewing this, it was actually like this. And I've brought it up, sewed it around, come around again, sew it around, and then I've twisted it. And that's how I got these handles. And on the side here, again, I've done the circle and I've added a button. Many, many ways to finish off your baskets. So this time I'm going to do something different again because that's, it's just fun to do things different. So I've decided to just bend it up, make a little loop, come up again with another one, have the second loop come up a bit further. And then I'm going to come up with my smaller loop on the end and sew that in place. Like, sort of like so. I think that might look kind of pretty. So here we go. So this is what I've got so far. Now I'm going to come in, I'm going to sew through these parts here and then this part here to give it some more strength and also here and here and here. And this is where you might need a tool to keep that pushed in there. Just until it catches. And so there's my decorative side. I'm going to just come around and sew again one more round and I'll do the same thing on the other side to match this decorative edge. I'm going to do a little bit of a twist in the cord, like so. I'm going to sew just along here without attaching this cord. take out my next pin and I'm going to start sewing this together right here. So I'll just angle my basket again and bring it up. I catch it and come 
back with a backspace, backstitch, sorry, <laughs> say backspace. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to drop this cord so it's going to be down in here. So I'm not actually going to sew any of this. I'm just going to leave this out. I'm going to bring my needle up to this point and then I will do my last design up here. So this is going to just stay out of the picture. We're just going to sew around. So just angle it back again. So you're only sewing into this. So I'm just bringing my cord around to the back here. So I'm going to finish this off and I'm just going to back stitch. I'm going to take my basket off. Because what I want to do now is make a little circle on the end here. So I'm just going to take off some of the bulk right here. angling that down with my scissors. Just gonna pull down the material and get rid of some of the cord so I don't see it. Bring that back up. And now I'm just going to coil this around and make a circle. So with a straight stitch, I'm just going to sew right through this whole circle just to fasten it. Now all you have to do is tack down the leftover cord that you had that you wrapped. This one was up here. I decided to bring it down and I've tacked it here. I've brought it around just let it drop down. And then I'm going to do a little turn here and there's my little spiral that we made. So all I'm doing is I'm coming in with a threaded needle and it's much easier if you find that you can go and find um, a space in between the two rows when you're sewing these together. So right here I'm coming in between two rows. I'm going to come right over top and go down in between two rows here again. And just give that a little bit of a tug. We'll do that one more time. And just cinch that in and then just tie off your knot on the back and then just go around wherever you feel it's necessary to, to tack it in place and here I'll finish uh, tying this off later and I'll probably tack it here as well I also found these cute little wooden cutouts at the dollar store and I thought that would really look really pretty on a basket and there's our finished square basket. We started with the cord going back and forth to form our square. We finished off with some fun little loops for the sides and then we brought up our last bit of cord with a circle and finished off with a little butterfly.